What's up everybody? In this video, we're gonna talk about anger management for relationships. And so I've invited my wife, Kristen, to join me. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So stay tuned. In any given relationship, anger is natural, conflict is natural. Anytime you have two human beings with free will who are choosing to be together, there are going to be times when you disagree and when conflict can lead to anger. That's natural. The question isn't how do we avoid conflict altogether? The question is how do we deal with conflict when it arises? Now, Kristen and I have been together for 20 years. We've been married for 18 years. So we've figured out some keys and we're going to give them to you in this video. The first key would be what? Memory isn't perfect. Mm, I couldn't remember what the key was going to be. <laughs> so we're there to help each other. <laughs> so memory isn't perfect. It's one of the best things that we've ever learned. Mm. When we came across this information, the memory wasn't perfect. It was difficult at first to really get here. Like we could get it here fast, right. but to get it here took time. Right. It's when you when it, when you remember something a certain way, your brain really believes it. So it's really hard mm. to all of a sudden then let that go. But when when you're ang when you're angry or you're arguing over something, you just have to kind of let that go and, and, and realize that memory isn't perfect, what your, your re rec recollection of something can be wrong. So you can just kind of take the ego out of it and say, my memory is that this happened, but who knows what happened? That's the key, taking your ego out and saying, my memory was. Look, there was a Challenger study. A professor, after the Challenger, the space shuttle blew up, a uh, professor had his students write down their experience of what happened. And then a few years later, he brought all those students back and he asked them what happened. And their, when their memories differed from their handwritten journals, he showed them their handwritten journals and be, they couldn't rectify mm. that their memory was different than right. what they wrote. So they were so attached. They said, that's not my writing. That can't be it. Right. So we know people are really attached to memory and it's difficult to let go of that. But when you can shift by saying exactly what you said, which is my memory of it was. Right, my memory of it mm. was this. It could be wrong, it could not be. I mean, this is my memory. This is my truth of what happened. But there, you know, like when you look at all the different sides of a box, there's your side and what you're seeing, there's what I'm seeing, there's what this person yes. is seeing. So there's always, a, everyone has a different truth sometimes, even of the same exact experience or interaction. So always just, you know, say my truth or my memory of this was. I love that. So that's the first key. The second key would be to not take things personally. Right. Now look, I know the very first thing we're going to get in the comment section is people saying, how can you not take things right. personally in a relationship? It's an argument between right. people. It's part, how does it not get more personal <laughs> right. than that? Right. right. And with anger management through the years, I've seen people learn to understand that, let's say for instance, road rage. Right. Eventually I've worked with people where they've learned, okay, on the road, it's not personal. Mm -hmm. It's just a car. But when it's a relationship, people are like, no, it is personal. Right. This is my relationship. Right. So how do you not take things personally? Well, I think when you're seeing someone's going through experiencing something, it's always going on inside of them. Mm. So whatever you're experiencing, if it's coming out at me, it's first and foremost happening inside of you. Mm. So what you're saying might be sound personal but what it really is is just what's going on inside of you so if you can kind of let that part go and realize like this person's stressed out my spouse or significant other needs something let me just let this stuff aside and what's going on like what is going yeah, on yeah not taking it personally right. you've yeah. said this through the years people can't say something that's not already inside of them right so yes it feels personal but ultimately at the end of the day as close as we are it's still not personal. We still have our own individual experiences of life. So the second key is not to take things personally. Right. Mm -hmm. The third key to anger management in couples mm -hmm. is letting go of the need to be right. Mm, that can be a tricky one. <laughs> <laughs> it can be really, really right. tricky. Right. And I think when we're young and we're trying to jockey for position in a relationship, mm -hmm. we often want to be attached to being right. Mm -hmm. Because if I am right, then you'll value me. Right. But as we grow together, as we have for 20 years, we eventually learn it's not worth it being right. 
great. And if you have two people and your memory is this and my memory is this, and if one of these people ends up, like if you're arguing over something specific and this person ends up being right and you spent all this time arguing over it, it doesn't matter who's right. It just mm. matters that you've spent all that time and wasted all that precious life mm. arguing over what? You know, right. It doesn't matter right. who's right. So, right. so someone was right about one recollection, about one thing and one time. And how, is, how are you right. any happier now? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that's a good, good yeah. question to ask because we've been together 20 years. There are couples that have been together much longer than right. we have. Absolutely. And any couple we've ever encountered ultimately says the same thing, which is we don't even remember what we right. argued about ever. 20 years ago. What, were you ever, <laughs> it's so really learning up front to be less attached. Let go of the need to be right. And that's really important to be able to do that. And one step to doing that is the next key, which is being mindful of what's going on inside of you. Mm. How many couples and how many relationships go through needless arguments because one of them is hungry. Oh. <laughs> this boy, sometimes he just needs a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> so hunger or sleep, sleep, right. sleep. Right. And you've always, and this is something that I love that you've said throughout the years is that you said, you know, people always say, don't go to bed angry. And you say, go to bed angry. You might just be tired. Why stay up all night for hours arguing and getting more tired and mm. hungrier? And your body is physiologically supposed to be on the downgrade. You know, you're supposed to be going into that sleepy mode. If it's late at night and you're just exhausted, go to bed. If yeah. you're still upset in the morning, then talk about it then, but at least you're refreshed and more ready. For <laughs> yeah, you're ready for the argument. Yeah, you're ready. <laughs> right. You're ready. But most of the time I have seen for us in right. our own relationship and with people I've worked with through mm -hmm. the years, they'll say, when I went to sleep and I woke up refreshed the next day, I didn't even remember what we were fighting about right. anyway. How many times does that happen? <laughs> right. Yeah. So at some point you want to learn from that. Be mindful about what's going on inside of you. Mm -hmm. If I can express, hey, listen, I'm really hungry right now. Now, then again, you don't have to take that personally because I'm saying, look, I feel really agitated. Right. And you've said this, it's the tone of voice it too. Does. Right. And it, and it, and it, when I hear you say that, like if you're, if you're struggling and we're traveling or something and you're like, listen, I can feel it coming on. I feel it. My body, I'm hungry. So don't take anything personally. And my energy might be different. I'm just hungry. That takes all of my, my defenses down too. And I'm just kind of like, he needs help and I need to help him out. Like he, he needs something so let's go instead of worrying about you know what's going on or what our arguments will be or what you know what that interaction looks like we just need to focus on getting him out of that state that's huge because right. that goes from being a conflict to something that we're trying to solve together right. if i'm suffering side. or struggling right. how are we helping fix that Absolutely. so that's huge yeah. and one way to do that is the fifth key which is to ask for what you want mm. I can't tell you through the years how many people have gotten angry at their partner or loved one because they didn't do what they wanted to do, but they didn't even ask them. Right. So. And there's a difference between asking in an assertive way and an aggressive way. And mm. you always talk about the difference between those two. Yes. There's a difference between assertiveness, which is saying what you want, and aggressiveness, mm. which is trying to physically dominate someone in some way or dominate them mentally or verbally. Mm. It's not about aggressiveness. It's about assertiveness. It's about saying, if I want something, the only way for you to know right. is for me to ask. Right. Don't play a game. If you know what you want, ask for what you want. You have to be your advocate and advocate for yourself. Mm. You want something, ask for it. Right. We've been together 20 years. I can't guess that just because we've been together for 20 years, oh, you should know what I'm thinking right, right now. Right. How would I know? <laughs> and what's interesting is there are times when couples might know. I might say, well, he did know what I was thinking or she did know what I was thinking. Sometimes, sure. Right. right. So therefore I expect she will always or he will always know. That's the difference. Right. Sometimes doesn't mean always. Right. So. so being able to ask for what you want is absolutely so important. It's one of the keys to anger management in couples. So the five keys again are one, memory isn't perfect. Mm. I think that's what the first key was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and number two is don't take things personally. Absolutely. I won't be offended that you said that. <laughs> number three, letting go of the need to be right. Number four, be mindful of what's going on inside of you. Are you hungry or tired? Absolutely. And can I do the fifth one? Please do. It's asking for <laughs> what you want. Look, anger in couples, as we said, is natural. Conflict will arise, mm -hmm. but learning how to deal with it effectively is important. And we believe these five keys can significantly help you. As always, we wish you much, much peace. peace.